Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And I'm here until midnight tonight with the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California, out to Larry Bubbles Brown. How you doing, Larry? Hello, Alec. I'm on fire. You're you're on fire. <laughs> Tell me why you're on fire. No, I'm just I'm just trying to be uh, upbeat for your program. Yeah. Here. Is there anything to be upbeat about? Uh, I'm not bleeding, so I guess that's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're not, uh, it, what was it? Well, I had a, a, a producer, Albert, who said to me, I said, I, I don't know if I'm well. I don't know if what I've got is a problem here. And he goes, Is it bleeding? And I said, No. Then if it doesn't bleed, don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's that's something to think about. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so uh, what? how have you been? I've been uh, doing nothing exciting. Uh, things are slowly opening up so uh okay. hoping to get back into this ruse of stand up again well supposedly san francisco is 10 percent away from herd immunity or something i know the numbers here have been incredibly low yeah yeah but i mean that the, the enough people have gotten the shots that they're within 10 percent of herd immunity just san francisco wow. not california but san francisco at least that's what i hear well, I guess we're coming back then. Yeah, we are. We are. Supposedly, the punchline in Cobbs may open in August, so it's still a way off. So. Oh, okay. Well, if you were here in New York, you'd be opening up uh, next week. That's what I heard. So that's great. Well, I don't know if it's a little premature. You know, I mean, I'm. Uh, you know, I mean, I. I don't want to take chances with my life. I don't know about yours. Yeah. Well, you're fully protected, though. Yeah, I'm fully protected. You get your shots? Not yet. Why not? I'm uh, waiting. That <laughs> yeah, my my joke was I finally got my shot polio. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to wait sixty years and make sure they're safe. <laughs> oh boy. Oh God. Yeah. All right. Now, do you remember the? Uh, I remember. Uh, when he got the polio shot, I think it was a, not a shot, it was on a sugar cube. The, I remember the sugar cube. That's how I got it. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, we always give, uh, uh, what's his name, um, um, who, who came up with the, uh, the salt vaccine? Salt. Albert. The, jo- salt Jonas Salt. Al- jo- Albert Sabin. And then Albert Sabin. But uh, they always give uh, Salk all the credit. And yes, he did come up with the first polio vaccine. However, however, the kids didn't like getting shots. So it wasn't really, didn't get the critical mass and wiping it out until the cube came along and Sabin came out with the oral vaccine. And now we're working on an oral vaccine for this. And that might change everything too. Did not know that. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't real, but then again, uh, I'm. I love it how people say I'm waiting to see if it's safe. Uh, how many people have taken this now? Uh, how many well, have died? Well, pop up years later. What'd you say? You could have reactions uh, months or years later to it. Oh yeah, because uh, the, you know it's all those uh, the uh, the uh, uh, what is it five G they're putting in your system with the. Uh, <laughs> I love it. That, they, they can track. That they can track me wherever I go. Yeah. Uh, what about that phone you're carrying? I know. There before the cell phone, there was uh, there was all the talk. The government's going to put a chip in all of us, and well, now they don't need to. They don't need they to. The, We're carrying the chip around with us. No. Yeah. Except for you. Except for me. Although, isn't there a way? I think they sell these sleeves where you can put your phone in that. It blocks the signal. It blocks the signal. 
Yeah, so like a little aluminum. Then can I ask stuff. you a little question here? And it may be a moot point, but then how do you make a call? Well, you have to pull it out to make the call. Oh, but, but then they, they know where you otherwise are. Otherwise, they're not then able they, to track every moment. But you're, when you make the call, then they know where you are. Yeah. But <laughs> when it's in the sleeve, they don't know where you are. I see. Okay. That's uh, okay. All right. This is Paranoia 101. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other things you're paranoid about? <laughs> Just... Uh, I used to be paranoid about dying, but now I've accepted that. I think I'm, I, I'm paranoid about dying. I, 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 every morning I wake up with the fear of death. You're I really like, do. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's terrible. It's terrible. But at my age, it's a reality. You know, I mean, but you know, I've always had this fear of death, and now it's you know. And on top of that, I'm tired all the time. Just tired all the time. And well, that's I, from the allergies. It could be the allergies. It could be, uh, it could be a lot of different things, you know. But I, I don't think it's anything serious. I just think it's, uh, it's, it's being indoors for a year that helped, you know. So I'm just tired all the time. I mean, I'm exhausted right now. Yeah. So you're not getting any vitamin D. You know, I take vitamin D. You know, so I don't know. I, I mean, I've been taking walks lately. You know, trying to do that. Well, that's good. You've been in the house for a year. That's incredible. Yeah, but I've been I, the, all, uh, every day this week. I've taken some kind of walk. Okay, M- usually a couple of miles. So well, that's great. Yeah, but I still feel tired. You know, it, it didn't uh, didn't help me. And then I'm I'm eating early, thinking maybe I I just what I do is I don't eat until dinner time. And they, that's the reason I'm tired. You know, I'm not getting any food in me. That could be it. But here I am. I'm. I had a, a couple of eggs just now and some bread, and I'm. St- I'm. I'm dog tired. I don't know if you can tell that I'm tired, but I'm tired. You don't sound tired, but yeah. are you getting your uh, diet coke? You need your caffeine. I, I. I'm drinking my coffee right now. Okay. That doesn't do anything for me. I'm going to go back to cocaine. <laughs> I think that's maybe the answer, you know? Because I remember on cocaine, I was never tired. I was always <laughs> awake and chatty. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine was so big in the 80s. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Of the, How long? Well, cocaine's been around forever, but when did it become popular? Was it the 80s? I, I think when I started using it was the 80s, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, mid eighties. Well, actually, no, at early eighties, early eighties. I remember the first time I ever had Coke. Uh, I was in. Uh, I I don't think I ever did it in New York, and then I went to San Francisco, and I was working at this radio station. And like every radio station, there was a Coke dealer who worked there. <laughs> there was yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we held this thing, whatever it was, I don't know, some kind of event, and we all went to the bathroom, and everybody was, uh, suddenly there were like 10 people in each stall. I couldn't figure out why. And I said, what's going on in there? And they said, come on in. And they dragged me in, and they stuck a spoon under my nose, and after that, I was into Coke, you know. Well, who wasn't? I mean, did you, did you do any back then? I tried it three times, and it really didn't do anything for me. But it didn't do anything for you? First two times, nothing. The third time, it made me a little nervous. Was... Yeah, yeah. Well, it made, made me... Uh, uh, it. it uh, I got... I got, think I got... I thought I got hooked on it. But then, uh, I uh, when I went to... Uh, when I had to go to uh, Florida to work, I took Coke with me, and I did my last toot at the Florida border, and then I quit. And I thought it was going to be hellacious, you know, that I was going to go through these withdrawals and all that. Nothing. Nothing. I just, well, you know, a couple of days I wished I'd been a little more, uh, what we call a little, little peppier, but outside of that I was okay, you know. Well, it's amazing because you need drugs to live in Florida. But I sure could use it right now, you know. 
yeah, but uh, anyway, so Coke, Coke, Coke was uh, Coke was a good uh, good hobby, and I you know I was making enough money that it didn't you know it wasn't it wasn't I wasn't spending all my money on Coke, all right, so you know, um, so that uh, that's the uh, the difference there. Uh, that's you're right. That there there is always one is always a very sleazy looking person that was the dealer. <laughs> Just, they were always around, hovering like. In the comedy clubs, there'd be a guy like that. And oh, well, uh, well, there was a com. There was one comedy club we went to where they had coke all the time. I think the name of the club uh, had something to do with a guy's name and an initial. <laughs> I didn't know that. Really? I didn't know that. No. Oh God! You go there, the back room. Oh my God! <laughs> they should have called it the powder room. <laughs> You know. Well, I remember there was a, a big study came out in the early 80s that said cocaine was not addictive, and then it turns out a lot. Of, it turns out it was to a lot of people. Well, nothing is addictive unless you are uh, subject to being addicted by it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, um, oh, we just lost him. Son of a bitch. Just out of a clear blue sky, we just lost him. Now, now it says Larry is unavailable. Let me try it again. Here we go. He has to. There we go. Okay. I don't know right. what happened there. It just all of a sudden, boop, nothing. I know. You know. And we do these calls using Skype. That may be the problem. But we can't use Zoom because that Larry is not hooked up for that. So. Yeah. You know. You have you ever done Zoom? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> listen to him. It's like, what, what are you asking me a question like that? Do I? What? Does... Uh, no, it's very dismissive. I, I've seen. Uh, I know a bunch of comics were doing Zoom shows, but they just they just sound like it's not. Yeah, you know, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Of course, it doesn't work. If I asked you right now, hey, uh, you haven't done your act in a long time, uh, Larry. Come on, do a few <laughs> minutes of it. Go ahead, yeah. do a few minutes of it. <laughs> Wouldn't work. <laughs> you know. I mean, the only time I, your material ever gets on the air here is when I'm quoting you, you know. And I love my favorite quote is, uh, you know, uh, um, I don't mind having my identity stolen. Now somebody else can have no life. That's my favorite line of yours. <laughs> I'll ride that one into the grave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of your best lines. So, so you were talking about people having addictive personalities. So Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the thing is about addictive personalities is certain things you can get addicted to and certain things you don't get addicted to. I found that I was not addicted, as as addicted to cocaine as I thought I was, okay? I mean, everybody was telling me, oh, you know, if you've been doing it for a while, it's going to be really hard to quit, so you don't ever want to quit. But one day I had to quit, and it was easy, you know? Um, uh, uh, one day I decided to quit smoking. That was it. You know? I mean, I, I, I had this amazing ability to just stop you, doing stuff. That sounds like you do, because uh, giving up smoking sounds like it's impossible for most people. Well, uh, you know, there was a clue that I had. I give this to everybody whenever they say, I'm thinking of quitting smoking, although you don't meet many people like that anymore because most people have quit smoking or didn't start at all. But uh, uh, when, I, when they think about quitting smoking, I said, here's what you do. You're, you're not quitting smoking. You're going to see how long you can go without a cigarette. Don't put a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a thing in front of you, a, a goal in front of you. I'm going to quit smoking. Well, that's, that's giving yourself something that you might be able to fail at, you know, but if you say, I'm going to see how long I can go without smoking, that's a different story. So that's my suggestion. You know. Could you uh, give up coffee? Uh, if I had to, I'm not that addicted to it. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm ti I told you I was tired, right, all the time? Yeah. I'm drinking coffee now. It's not doing a goddamn thing for me. You know. I would have a hard time giving up Diet Coke. Uh, I have not been doing Diet Coke lately. Maybe I should do more of it. Uh, I've, I've found what I've started using is at uh, Costco. 
They have this Kirkland sparkling water, and it's flavored. So it comes in uh, kiwi, it comes in raspberry, it comes in something else. And I've been drinking nothing but this stuff. I haven't even been doing Snapple. I've been doing this stuff. So maybe I should go back to doing the Diet Coke a little more. Maybe that that's, will pep me that's up. That's where I get my caffeine blast. So. You know, that maybe I... Somebody told me you actually get more of a caffeine blast out of Diet Coke than you do out of coffee. That really? Wow. That's what I heard. That's what I'd like to believe. Okay, well, somebody saw me once. I was looked like I was half dead and I had a Diet Coke, and suddenly I just came to life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Maybe it does. Hey, well, listen, we've run out of time here. It goes by quickly. It doesn't it go by two qu- titans together? <laughs> you two titans of comedy. <laughs> anyway, talk to you next week. We will. Yes, we will. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, I fucked up the opening tonight where I was ran the bubbles slide and then I did it. And it's because I took that nice pill last night and it makes me all discombobulated. So what the hell? I don't care anymore. I really don't. I've lost all will to do a perfect show. It's, uh, you know. I go online and I, 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 my latest thing is, of course, I told you how much I like YouTube from the standpoint that if you had to build a house, you could probably build a house learning how to build it on YouTube, okay? So that's, that's, that's YouTube, all right? And uh, so I go to YouTube and I, I figure, eh, maybe they'll have some hints on how to, how to get more listeners to your show. Because, you know, I knew how to get listeners to a radio show. That was what I did for years. I was very good at it. I got big audiences. And, um, but when it comes to the, to the uh, Internet, all the rules have changed. I mean, guys are getting, um, uh, you know, a hundred uh, a million views on uh, the ten things you didn't know about Star Trek. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should do something like that. But then again, I go, that's not me. I wouldn't have fun doing that. I have fun talking to these people every night here. I wish we'd get some new ones occasionally joining us and mixing it up a little bit. Uh, like you out there who have never called, and maybe you should call tonight. All you do is you go to gabnet.net, which is our web page, and uh, there's a thing that says Zoom. You just click on that. It automatically takes you to here. Why not? Okay, why not? Anyway, so that's my, uh, so anyway, so I, I look at these things, and I, this is what was one about it. Well, here's how to do it, and I start watching it, and these guys are so fucking dull. I'm going, well, I don't want to watch these guys, and if I don't want to watch these guys, they're telling me how to get people to listen to me. Oh, here's what you do. You must have a plan. Your program must have a plan. You must know where you're going to go with your plan. And I go, geez, almighty, you know. And then I look at the people who do well on the, uh, on, on the uh, uh, podcasts and so on, and it's just ridiculous. It is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't know what her name is. Miranda, I think, was her name. And a few years back, Seinfeld decided to put Miranda on Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee because he figured, well, she's a big hit. She's got like a million, three million people watching her. Uh, she'd be good for a show. And he took her out for coffee in the car like he normally does on that show. And he, at one point he looked at the camera and goes, this is not going well. Because this girl didn't even know who Jerry Seinfeld was, okay? Now, I know we find that a little impossible to believe. The, you know, we don't understand who uh, Jerry Seinfeld is, but let's be honest, folks. When was the Seinfeld show on, okay? It was on in the, uh, I believe it was on in the 80s, okay? It made it to the 90s, all right? Okay, so a kid growing up today would have to be over 40 years old to know who Jerry Seinfeld was. Okay? 
So when you hear about a kid going, uh, really, you had a big show? You were a number one TV show? Wow. I have three million hits on my show. Um, and you go, well, how dumb is she? And I go, she's not dumb. She just doesn't pay attention to what went on before her. And there are lessons to be learned from what went on before you. Okay? So uh, anyway... Uh, so here you got all these people giving advice on how to get people to watch, and I'm at a loss. I don't know where to begin. I've got a couple of hundred people that watch this every day, and it used to be maybe 400, 500, but it's, it's dwindled as the Internet has grown. There's so many podcasts out there now. It's, a, you know, it's literally a, a, a drain on the market. Um, and so consequently, I have no idea how you do it. You know, how you get people to watch you. You know, how do you get the word out there? I don't want to pay for advertising. I'd like word of mouth to do this. And then I wonder if I really have a product anybody wants to really watch. Let's be honest about it, okay? Why would you want to watch this? It's an hour and a half long, and it's people talking for an hour and a half. Now, maybe in your car or listening on the audio version, which is also going out, even as we speak, okay, uh, uh, it's going out as we speak uh, as an audio version, and people could listen to the audio version during the day by going to gabnet.net uh, um, and just, uh, well, where, where, where do you go exactly? Oh, I can't remember now. Uh, you go to our site, and you just click on the player there, and it will, it will play it for you. Or you can go to, um, uh, you can go over to, uh, I'm trying to remember. Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. No, uh, tune, tune in carries it live. Okay. I'm trying to think of all the things that carry it live. I've signed up for so much stuff. We're on Spotify. We're on Pandora. I, uh, this show is on iHeartRadio. Uh, um, it is also on, uh, we have all our shows on, did I say on Pandora, Spotify, um, uh, tune in, uh, just a lot of different places and I can't remember half of them now some people go oh you know you're on uh, Stitcher and I forgot yeah we're on Stitcher I signed us up for Stitcher a long time ago but anyway I go out to all these people and it doesn't it doesn't help in the least and of course you can you can listen to us on iTunes uh, you can listen to the last night's show the most recent show any of our shows actually whether it's Jack's or mine or the sports show or uh, Damien uh, or um, uh, Michael Snyder's movie reviews are on to, on, on uh, uh, Apple, okay, on the podcast. Uh, but, I mean, you know, uh, with all those outlets, uh, I think probably my audio does, in the end, get more listeners. Um, I, every now and then I check to see what kind of numbers we get on those, and they're pretty good. I'll tell you what got me good numbers. Last uh, Sunday, Marjorie and I took a hike up to Columbia University and then to Broadway. And we went and got lunch. And uh, I did a video of it with Marjorie and I having lunch. And for some reason, that got more viewers. That, that little video, which is maybe 20 minutes, got more viewers on YouTube for me uh, than any of the shows of the previous week. Okay, just that. Okay, uh, and I didn't. I didn't do it on. I. I didn't do it on uh, on iTunes. I did it on uh, on Facebook. Uh, I do a lot of my stuff to Facebook because it's easier for me since I already have a whole thing going with TuneIn, and I don't want to ruin it. I'd have to explain the whole process to you, but anyway. So I do the shows that I don't do at night here, which I do live on uh, iTunes on. Uh, on uh, <laughs> uh, I hate it when I just can't remember anything anymore. I always have to look now on YouTube. Um, uh, I I find it if I do it at Facebook, it it it's better. It gets to many people faster. I don't know why, but anyway, like today I did a thing in the park and I got some viewers to that, and that combined with the ones that were on. Uh, uh, YouTube, which uh, you can go to YouTube and it's there, uh, 
got me about as many viewers as I got last night on this show, and I didn't have to work hard on it. So I, you know, I keep wondering what 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 is the magic potion to get? I mean, there are people getting a million views. Okay, uh, Joe Rogan, who's who really sucks. Okay, Joe Rogan is just a mediocre comic. Always was. Always will be. But for some reason, uh, he got a million-dollar contract with Spotify, which they're starting to kind of have buyer's remorse about, okay? Uh, but I, I think with Spotify, yeah. He got, a million, he got paid a million dollars for his show to be exclusively on Spotify. I don't know why. What's so great about that show? There are a lot better people doing, doing podcasts. Uh, but, you know, it's a matter of being able to get the publicity, pay for the advertising to get that publicity. It's not like when I began doing it, I could get large audiences because people were looking for stuff to listen to. Now, there is so much of it out there, and so many people are spending money to advertise it. Like, for instance, uh, some of the people on CBS Sunday Morning do little podcasts, and then they advertise the podcast on CBS Sunday Morning. Well, how am I going to get that many viewers with that kind of advertising and that kind of publicity? So, you know, it's, it's become, as, as, as it's grown and grown, and I think there's something like 3 million podcasts. What is this? This is this, right? And I'm, I'm trying to kind of do it like I used to do radio, but quite frankly, that isn't what people want to hear. And also the investment you have to make is like maybe an hour and a half. And that's okay if you're driving and in a traffic jam and so on. And you can listen to my last night's show and, and uh, it keeps you company. But how many people want to do that, you know? And, and so how do, how do we get an audience out there? I have no idea. And uh, there are nights when I sit here and I go, this is it. I don't think I want to do this anymore. This has ceased to become fun. Okay, because for me, see, I'm an old time broadcast professional, and for me, the payoff is hey, we got a lot of listeners, people are really enjoying what I'm doing. And you know, since I'm not doing this for money, which I could make a lot of money if I got a million people watching this show every day, I would make a fortune from YouTube just a fortune. Okay, but I'm not doing that. Okay. So I make a couple hundred bucks a year off of this. But I, I don't do this for the money. I do it because I like it, because it's fun, because it still keeps me active. It still keeps me annoying people, which I love to do. Um, but, you know, how do you get out there? How do you break through the noise? And I, I you know, as the person who, and I'm going to lay claim to this, and I will claim it till the day I die. And I never claim things that I... I can't back up, okay? I've got a little program here that was made by a guy back in 1998, I think it was, called Auto Alex, okay? And how it came about was that I didn't have a job. I got fired from the radio station, and um, I wanted my my audience to be able to hear from me every day. So they knew I had a website, and I was one of the first people, early people, adopters to have a website, okay? I had one that goes all the way back to, like, 1993 or something like that. Uh, it was called The Surfing Monkey. Um, and um, I did this, I just did a, a, a little audio thing I mean, sometimes I'd interview somebody, sometimes I'd just talk like I'm talking now, and uh, maybe I'd play a little music, because in those days you didn't have to pay rights and things like that. Nobody was paying attention. And uh, it was about 20 minutes to 30 minutes long each day. And then people could just, I'd put it up on my site, and then they could just click on it or download it from there and, and listen to it. Well, that is, in and of itself, a podcast, an early version of a podcast. I don't know if I'm the first guy that ever sat there and talked for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and you could then go to the site and listen to it, but I was the first one that did the following. Guy comes to me, f f guy who'd been a fan of mine, he says, I got a program I just wrote for you. I said, what is this? Call Auto Alex. 
And by the way, I have a copy of it here. If anybody wants me to prove this, and it, it, I think it has a timestamp on it somewhere. Anyway, uh, he said to me, I, I, here's what you do. You put this up on your site. They download it from your site. It, it, it gets put on their computer, all right? Then what happens is every day their machine will go to your site to see if there's a new episode. If it detects a new episode, it automatically downloads it for them so that when they come home, waiting on their desktop is your show. I went, cool, let's do it. And we did it. What does that sound like to you? Okay. Uh, I probably should have sued Apple a long time ago for uh, the podcast concept. Because really what we were doing there was the first podcast. It was the first automatic delivery system to, to you to be able to listen to me. Uh, and I will take claim for having invented, basically, the automatically delivered podcast. I and this other guy who was the techie who came up with this brilliant scheme. So anyway, uh, as the guy who created the podcast to be in a position where I'm going how do I get listeners really is very frustrating to me very frustrating and uh, uh, you know it continues to vex me constantly and if anybody has any ideas you know throw them my way but right now there are only two people waiting to talk to me so let me click on the uh, admit all which will will do that and uh, let's see here here they come uh, we just got, well, we got, actually only have one, which is Alan. Hello, Alan. How are you? Hello. You have 44 listeners to your ramble uh, when you were rambling by yourself just now. Well, maybe I found a new a new way of doing this show. Huh? Maybe. Yeah. You're uh, talking uh, and people were, the numbers are going up. Yeah, here comes Charlie Wallace. And that's it. That's our entire panel for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Good night. Yeah. Hey. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway. What uh, what's doing, guys? Oh, I got my sh uh, shingles vaccine today. Oh, really? It hurts a lot more than the COVID shot. Pussy. Did you get a double? Did you get a double single uh, double shingle no, I shot? Wait, I have to wait two months to get the second one. Oh, I see. So you got a <laughs> single shingle shot. <laughs> yep. We that's what tomorrow. It was. Try saying that three times fast. No, I can't even say it once. <laughs> yeah, a, a single shingle shot. Do da do da. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, oh, what what was that? Did some did somebody do something? Let's see here. Oh well, here comes Tony Magno. You know, uh, I, I never thought I would. It would be a blessing to see him come on, but here he is. We we have Tony Magno. Hey, Tony's. Posting a lot of Spike Lee stuff today. Yeah, I was just. I was. How does he get a million fucking dollars? That steroid head. What? Joe Rogan. what? Give me a fucking. Oh, break. Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. 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 I heard you say a million dollars. They bought his show for I don't know how yeah. long for a million dollars. But it, only, it, it it's something that Spotify is going to. It's going to come home to haunt them. You know they're already having problems with it. <laughs> Because, but you know what he does? Because of his anti, his anti vax, huh? You know what he does, Alex? I listened a few times because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I, I, I enjoy uh, the old Art Bell show, Coast mm -hmm. to Coast, because mm -hmm. I like all that crazy, like conspiracy theories and stuff. Well, like that. I always, what I always hated about Art Bell is somebody would come on, yeah, and, and he, and and he would go. Uh, uh, they would go, I got uh, aliens uh, took me up on their spaceship and they probed my ass, you know. And rather than sit there and question the validity of this guy, he would go, oh, tell me more. Really? <laughs> really? That happened to you? Did you he would him? never challenge these people. And I'm going, come on, Art, you know, you're not. <laughs> the, the night I, I know you're living in Pahrump and nobody <laughs> wants to go to Pahrump. And you don't, you've lost contact with the world, but you still know what sanity is and what insanity isn't, and you're talking to crazy people. I always was going to ask you, was, I always used to listen to the show late at night in, in the bed, and I'm like, 
I, I was going to ask you this once. Is that like a script like old shoes? I want. Uh, is that set up, you think? No. Oh, no. It, no, no, no. So that's real then. You know, you could set it up to start the whole thing going, let's say. I was going to ask you that one. Time. But after a while, it, it's, it's, out, like, after yeah. a while, it's self-perpetuating because every okay. asshole. So you could probably tell if it's fake. Every asshole who wants his 15 minutes of fame is going to go on Art Bell and say he got anal probed by an alien. I when he used to have the night people, night shadows, or I forgot what he called them, lizard man. And that's like, oh God. When you, I, I started laughing at stuff. No, I'll tell but you, I, I, found I, this, I, I find it interesting. Uh, a couple of times I was I was driving from Sacramento late at night, uh, or from actually Nevada late at night. Um, and uh, uh, I put a show on. The, one of the reasons he was so popular is you have a thing on, on radio that's called a, a night signal. Uh, in which signals skip. And so something that you can, can't pick up during the day, oh, really? you can pick up at night because there's what it skips off the atmosphere. Yeah. And it's called, uh, uh, that, you know, so anyway. He uh, had a good voice too at night. You could get his show food. on five different channels as you were driving. Yeah. So if one faded out, you just went to another. And I listened to him for five hours one night as I was driving back to San Francisco and I went, well, you know, it's nuts. It's crazy. My, it is. my, the intellectual self says this is the stupidest show I've ever listened to. I like it, though, yeah. But the oh, person no. craving entertainment at one o'clock in the morning, driving down a ribbon of highway. I used to fall asleep to him. Oh my God. He used to put me to sleep, but I used to wake up at three and hear his voice on again. Is he all another crazy yeah, call? Yeah, it appealed. That, that appealed to me. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I have to admit that he had a good thing. And then he went crazy. Something happened to him. Yeah, yeah and he, he went, went, he went off the air. Uh, some threat to his child or something oh, like that. Mm. And so he went off. And then he came back later on, but he wasn't as popular as when he went off. So. Now George Norrie took over. I listened to him. George Norrie, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised you know where Perump's at. Oh, I know where Perump is at. Outside of Las Vegas? Yeah. 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 I know where Perump is because when I was a kid growing up, there was a guy by the name of Red Blanchard had a radio show in San Francisco on uh, KCBS, and he was a very popular star with the kids. In fact, so popular, Life Magazine, I think, put him on the cover of Life Magazine. Wow. Uh, and uh, he used to use funny terms and words and stuff like that. One of his funny words was this town, Perump, Nevada. You know, so I always knew where Perump was. Let's see your whole face, uh, Tony. Tony. Look, oh, look, Tony. look at how your face is. See now. We want... oh, oh, look at the, look at the face. I got a shave for my mother from the grave, Alex. She's gonna kill me. I got a haircut. I got to do the half of it. What do you mean? What do you mean a haircut from the grave? Well, it's Mother's Day this week, and my hair was bushy. What right? are you gonna do for What are you gonna do for Mother's Day? Actually, I'm gonna probably put some flowers down at the cemetery. Nothing nice. crazy though. <laughs> I'm joking. That's <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah, it's kind of odd though. It's strange. And I didn't. I was getting a haircut because it was getting really messy. So I went to get a haircut. It you felt want, nice. You want my hint though? You well, gotta buy the flowers. Buy them like at the, you know at, at the grocery store. Don't wait till you get out there and buy them from the place closest to the cemetery. No, we don't. Yeah, we, you know what I usually do? I can grab them from my garden in the back if I really want to be cheap. Alex, because I have nice tulips. It, 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 you know, you listen, the mother's your, your mother's dead. You can be cheap. Okay. I know, and she always used to say she never wanted to go across street from the cemetery because she was always price gouging. You're right about that. We never did that. Yeah. No, there's a cemetery right across the street, but the guy charges you like crazy. Yeah. Are you, are you going to visit my grave when I go? I'd probably take them right out there if I'm if I'm out what seeing do you mean a giant. Out there, I, but I'm telling you right now. Where you go? You got a plot. She's it? already claiming my ashes. Okay, she wants. Oh, you're going to be sprinkled somewhere. No, she wants to turn me into crispy critter. Yeah, yeah. yeah you right be a crispy. So she better go first. Okay, and then I'll figure out what I want to have done with my body. I think probably just put me in bed and just lie me there and keep me there for a couple of years. Nobody will know I was dead. You know. Well, which you, you know, my father. I, I'm gonna. It's funny you said that. I the other night he must have been on my mind because I went to sleep and mm -hmm. I was dreaming and I woke up. He was cooking in the kitchen and he was laughing. And then I woke up and I said, like, you know, you know, it was kind of, you know, it was it was a nice dream because he was making some. And I'm like, I guess he's not mad that she's there with him. Hopefully, and I told my brothers, I, I dreamed the daddy. He says, he says, think he's mad. He says, well, he's, you know, was, you know, she was always breaking his balls, Alex. They were the polar opposites. 
I think that's why they lasted so long. I, I had a mother and father. Well, my mother's still alive. I had a mother yeah. and father like that. My mother was water. My father was dirt. Together, I mean, they, they were alive. like. I don't even know how they got together. They were like totally different. Oh yeah. Well, I, you know that's not unusual. You know, no? I mean, my mother and my father, I think, were in many ways totally different from each other. Right. You know, but my mother adored my father. You know, you said that. Although right? when he, when after he died, I said I really, she was like that. My mother, everything. Was I different. really love my father. Okay. Mother, not so much, right? <laughs> a sh much a shrink got mother. at least half a visit. I like on the that shrink one. story. She got a lot of money out of you. Huh? He. 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 Oh, he. <laughs> you were good to go for a couple of yeah. checks. Oh, you think I'm going to go to a female shrink who's going to tell oh. me when I'm complaining about an ex girlfriend leaving me that, that would I would. She just go, well, you were so wrong. You should have treated her better. You know, that's what you get out of a female. You're right. I didn't think of that. You really, she really be trying to What are you saying, Scott? You're, 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 wait, Scott, wait, Scott was nodding on that one. She, she, she wouldn't think that. She'd be professional. Do you yeah. think so? Yeah. I've been to lots of female shrinks. Yeah. Well, how professional is it when they, <laughs> when they charge you for an hour and only give you 50 minutes? Yeah. You know, kind of like that's for show. starters. Never. That's for starters. Like and that and the other part is they never show you an escape route out of psychiatry. You know? Uh, and once you start going to them, they look upon you as an annuity. He'll be here every week. He will have the hundred and fifty dollars in his hand, or maybe it's a two hundred an hour, two fifty. Uh, he'll have it in his hand. I'll make my money. He'll leave. He'll, and we won't solve the problems. We'll just talk about them. And he'll come back next week and make me another bunch of money. That's all yeah. they do. That's an easy job. And then they, they sit there with their little pad going, mm-hmm, tell me more. Mm-hmm. I can do that. And I want to know what he's <laughs> writing on the goddamn pad. He's probably drawing pictures of little flowers and kitties, <laughs> you know. So, I don't know. I so, just, Tony, you got your hair cut. Yeah, I guess good. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't complain normally, but you got some hair sticking up in the air like an antenna. And the, you and want to see something with me? You me? want to see something with me? I only had me? like twenty-five bucks on me. Why they give me forty dollars, Alex? Let me show thing. you something with me that I never show because you never see the back. But for some reason, this haircut Marjorie gives me is oh, perfect. Yeah. But. A couple of weeks fun. later, see this going out here? Oh, it's coming in the back this minute. Oh, this, it's growing. This, this it's growing. What is that? Is it, am I growing <laughs> horns? What is that? <laughs> Stophilis is coming out. Did you let that I have go same off. Thing. Look, I got hair in the back too. You know? Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Okay. I think it's normal. What? Alex, you should let that grow in the back. What? what? Why? Me? Alex, because it looks cool. What that it. that that thing that makes me that, that flares out like that? You can dye it black oh, and you look like you were forty years ago on on TV. I see. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's that easy, right? No, it isn't. Hey, Alex, I got a question. Yeah. Did did you work in uh, New York dur during the Son of Sam thing? Yeah, I think I was here during we Son here. of Sam. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a really uh, when when, really when, when, when was Son of Sam? What year? Like seventy seven. Oh, 77? Yeah, I came here in uh, 69, I think. So, yeah, I was here during Son of Sam. Yeah, there's, a really, there's a really good documentary on uh, Netflix about the Son of Sam, you know? Mm -hmm. No and spoilers. I haven't watched it yet. It's good. really good, but I'll tell you one thing. You, you a know, bunch they, of people they, die at the end. Yeah, but... It was you know, creepy. I saw the first two parts. They, they were showing the, uh, you know, those uh, the police sketches of the suspects, you know? They're a little different. Yeah, but you know what? One of them is exactly Trump. I said, well, watch it. <laughs> it's Trump. I, said, I thought you were going to say it looked like me. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> so did I. I, th I think, I think Trump is the son of Sam was, was trending on uh, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Trump's not That's all. That's for to God. Watch the movie. It looks exactly like him. Really? Okay. Well, I mean, I'll watch it. I, I saw it listed, and then I haven't. Then I went back to find it, and it wasn't there. Oh, really? So yeah, I got, really you know good. the trouble. The trouble with Netflix is that whole uh, site is so hard to negotiate. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it kind of bounces. Like yeah, I mean, and if you. you're if you're you know if you want to see something you want, and then later on you go looking for it, it's not there. You got to do a search, and then the search yeah. sometimes doesn't find. Yeah. It. I mean, I mean, I give up. 
You know, it's it's too difficult. And worse than that, you know, the worst one, what HBO is Max. Oh, my is brother's the, got that. It's, it's, it, oh, yeah. it's the worst, and I'll tell you why it's the worst. They go, okay, here's Bill Maher's show. Bill's Maher, new show, new episode, right? And yeah. you go and you click on it, and it plays an episode from three years ago. Oh. <laughs> now, this has been going on for a month. You would think somebody at HBO Max has figured this one out, or somebody has complained, but nobody yeah. has. And then it does it with other shows. Does John Oliver? I want you oh, I like this you. week with John Oliver. Here's this week's episode. New episode. It says you click on it. It's an episode from like a half a year ago. Yeah. And you go. You know doesn't tell somebody now. tell them they're making a major mistake? Oh, and here's the other one. There's yeah. another. There's another coming. Ep, uh, uh, epics. Oh, I kind of watch some rock Yeah. Uh, epics. Yeah. Uh, you, you go to Epics, you watch a show, like I'm watching The Godfather of Harlem, and I'm watching another show there, which I can't remember right now, Condor, and I go, okay, well, wait a minute, Marjorie has to go to the bathroom, I'll put it on pause, okay, she comes back, and the dialogue is all out of sync, Yeah, I have to stop it and come back into it, I can't just put it on pause, no, so here's another mistake, that another company has yet to find out about. What happens? Nobody tells them? And if I tell them, they'll probably think I'm, I'm an idiot because nobody else is complaining. You know. I don't know. I, I found Amazon Prime to be the best. Amazon and Prime? Eh, yeah, but they got a lot of... with my Prime membership. They got, a, they got a lot of crap there, though. It, it, you know. By the way, did you hear about Jeff Bezos? What, what happened now? I know you What's happened now? Like what? You think something horrible happened because I said, did you hear about Jeff Bezos? I love Amazon. God bless them. Yeah, so do I. Well, here's the thing. They got this deal where uh, both uh, his company, which is Blue Horizon, I think it's called, or Blue something mm -hmm. or another, and, and, and uh, uh, the, uh, SpaceX have been vying for the right to have the contract to go to the moon. So that? they gave it to SpaceX. Well, what do you know? The, uh, uh, Bezos is going to the Solicitor General and complaining that they erroneously gave them the deal. All's Bezos now, has Bezos hardly even has Bezos. a rocket ship yet, you know, where SpaceX is taking stuff up to the space station and they're bringing the vehicles back and they're landing here and they did, they did, they did. They've got a full program going on. And uh, so he's, he's complaining about the fact that he can't take, I'm going to take people to the moon too, you know. Well, you don't got a rocket ship. <laughs> no, 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 but I'm saying, well, he has one. I mean, it, the, oh, yeah. I saw a picture of it. It's, I think it's crashed. It, came, it finally came back without crashing. <laughs> That's the latest on that one. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, here, here, here goes SpaceX. Boom, up in the air. Boom, another one up in the air. A bigger mm -hmm. one, a giant one. They both. Oh, you want to come back? Oh, well, we don't really have to have you ditch in the water. We can just land the rocket back down here on a platform. What? Oh, and how about you, Bezos? Well, we can get it to you overnight. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the next day. Oh boy, you know. He's got so much. Yeah. So. And then, uh, yeah, the documentary is very good. I was going to tell you, uh, one of the uh, my mom's old uh, old friend Lois. We still mm -hmm. stay in touch with her. Mm -hmm. If you watch the documentary, the detective Bill Clark, mm -hmm. that was his actual uh, my Lois's husband John, who I know, that was his detective Alex. He worked undercover with him in the seventies. He worked that case. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I would try to get him to call the show, but he's not computer literate that much. He'd have he had great cops because he worked the case with Bill. Yeah. He, it was crazy back then. It had everybody on it. He was on the he was on the documentary. The guy uh, Bill Clark. Well, what's apparently. his name? Still alive, isn't he? Or he so, yeah, he's sixty seven. Oh yeah. Really? I thought he was older than that. I wonder if in in prison he goes like you know I was son of Sam. Me. Can you imagine? I mean, they tried to slit his throat in prison. I Did they really? Oh yeah. Really? Who are you talking about? Berkowitz. The, uh, yeah, oh. Berkowitz. Yeah. yeah. You know he he never uh, he never stood trial. Well, he pleaded guilty. Yeah. Everything, yeah. Because, you know, the, the reason why he pleaded guilty was because the rumor is, well, what's what this documentary is saying yeah. is that he was involved in this satanic cult. 
and he and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and he he knew if he if he was out on the streets they were going to kill him. Well, he was never going to get out. I mean, you know what was weird is that the composites. And I asked John this when I when he used to come over. I says we used to talk about cases. The composites were all different, and that's the one yeah. thing if you. The one guy of the composite, when you watch it, Alex, looked like that one guy, John, who was right in his area. So, yeah. and even that last victim who lived, uh, the Italian guy, he said that somebody was parked behind the car, and he told the cops, that is not the guy who did the last well, shooting. Well, you know, the other, case, he, the other case that's coming up now, uh, who was the guy who supposedly killed his wife, who was pregnant, and dumped her in the bay, Alan? Scott something. And Scott, Peterson. Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson, yeah. Uh, they're mm-hmm. trying to get him a new trial. Really? They say that he didn't do it. Really? Uh, and who's leading the, co- oh, the charge on it is his uh, sister-in-law, who says that he didn't do it. Oh, wow. Is and, the sister uh, of the wife that, mur- that he murdered? The sister of the wife he Lazy murdered, yeah. Right? Wow. Yeah. wow. His wife and the baby. Yeah. Well, they say that he was not there at the time, that all the timelines were wrong. Uh, I don't know. The uh, forensic scuba divers seem to find things underwater that was fairly close to Richmond and fairly close in time. All they found were the bodies. That's all they found. And yeah, but they, you don't. But and they claim why? Why? Why did they? It, 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 they say he killed him at the house. There's something I don't have all the information, so you'll have to look it up. Yeah. But but the the, uh, the the sister-in-law claims that uh, the police said that he was there, blah, 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 and then, you know, at a certain time frame, when it was, ah, there's absolute proof, she says, that he wasn't there during that time frame. Was she fuck? Was he fucking her or something? What? No, it might yeah, have been. Really? How, what's the proof? He might have been, he could have been fucking her, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. maybe she says that there is no way he could have done it. That they, But there were people in the neighborhood who were robbing homes. We oh. keep talking about criminals. We're almost up to 50 viewers. <laughs> well, you know, once we hit the 50, what do I need you guys for? That's right. <laughs> you know. Well, you, you know, Alex, I was looking up top-rated podcasts. Yeah. And most of them are murder mysteries or true crimes and everything else like that. Yeah. So at least, at least about six of the top 12 or so. Yeah. Listen, I have a piece of information. Okay, that I've been sitting on for 30 years, 35 oh. years. I'm not going to reveal it here, so don't get don't don't start jerking off. Uh, 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 about the about the uh, the uh, Tate LaBianca murders that would change the whole tone uh, of really? the thing, and it's information that I have known and that I have had corroborated on two occasions. They have pretty good proof of the people that were involved in it were the people that did it. Yes, but there's a motive they don't say. Was it a drug deal? Are the guys no. in that job? No. Is that no. the motive? No. 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 I bought that new guy's book on it. There, he wrote it. it doesn't Let's matter. Guessing. Maybe the guy's dead. I, I, I had this. Know? I got this piece of information. Oh wait, Alex, were they going there because they thought? Well, I got this piece, piece of out? information from my friend Michael O'Donnell, who's now dead. Who is uh, was a writer for SNL and of course uh, <clears throat> uh, was with the National Lampoon. You knew him on mm-hmm. SNL as Mr. Mike, and uh, he told me something that a girlfriend he had told him, and she was out in California as a reporter on the case, and a piece of information of something that she saw, and that was revealed to the press by the cops because they were trying to get some money for this information, okay? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I heard about this story. And so a couple of years later, uh, Ed Sanders, who was with a group called The Fugs, he was also a poet and a writer, wrote a book called The um, Family. Uh, uh, the Family. Was it The Family? Was that the title of the book? Yeah. 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 About a group called The Process. Yep, that's that, a cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he that's in the that's in the Son of Sam movie. Tries yeah. to make he it he discussed the whole thing with me, and after the show was over, I said, "Well, you know what I heard," what? and I told him what I had heard, which I am not going to reveal here. I wouldn't say it. Yeah, 
And he said, how'd you get that information? I said, I got it from Michael Adonio, and he had a girlfriend, and she was out reporting on the thing. He says, well, you got the right information. He oh, said, I have that information, too. I said, so why isn't it in the book? And he yeah. said, there are people who will kill anybody Holy shit. who reveals the truth of the, the, the Manson money. murders. Why does it matter right now? Charles Manson's dead. Well, uh, there them. is, it involves very wealthy people. They, they got definitely got money. Of and and like some, some of which are still alive. Somebody didn't like shopping at the La Bianca supermarket? No, I, I'm not going to go any further than that. The La, <laughs> Bian the La Bianca murders were a cover murder. They were not the reason for the Tate murders. The reason they did the La Bianca murders is because Tex Watson got arrested for the Manson, and they wanted to prove that he didn't do it by causing a crime very similar to it somewhere else. So they just picked the, the B La Bianca home in order yeah. to do a crime in which they could say, see, he was in, he was in jail and this happened. It, it, he didn't do the, the Manson thing, you know, the, the Tate, La, Tate uh, murders. Uh, so that's the reason why the La Bianca happened. Otherwise, the La Biancas would still be alive or you know, right. would have lived through it. Um, but there is a piece of information that I've had and held on to for years, and I've been trying to figure out if I want to ever reveal this information. Yeah. In a who? In a podcast. That would know, be a good place. And and tell the story, the true story of, 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 of at least so far as I know, because I've had the, I've had it corroborated. Okay, I had it. I had it fed to me by Michael O'Donoghue and then corroborated by Ed Sanders, who yeah. is certainly was one of the most learned people about the Tate murders because he wrote one of the. Definitive books on the subject. Yeah, the I this guy's book too. How involved? Oh, yeah. I didn't read it. Yeah. yeah. What? Wait, this guy was on a Tom yeah. O'Neill. Uh, is it a journalist? He, I, I didn't read it yet. He kind of delves into it, but he, he's taken and saying it with the CIA was in all the in the CIA all these dropping, books, they were in testing. all these books and all these documentaries. The fact, as I know it, has never been revealed. Oh, well, that's interesting. I would keep it a secret. I'd be scared out. And it is the motive for the murder. Holy moly. Yeah. But anyway. And uh, you got two people corroborating it. I bet you there's got to be some truth to that. Uh, I believe it. I mean, he told me, he said, I, I, I would never mention that, he said, to anyone. And, it never and made this, this was 35 oh, years ago. He said, I'd never mention that to anyone because it has been said that if anybody reveals that information, they're dead. You know, I they'll be killed. Yeah, but the person that's going to do the killing died 20 years ago. Well, you know, you that's may be wrong, point. right? You may be wrong, you know. But until I know I only have a few years left on this planet, <laughs> and until I get some kind of a death sentence from a doctor, I'm not going to reveal it. Then I'll reveal it. Okay. You know. And it will suddenly, the whole crime pops into view. You then understand the crime. And why it took place. I understand the crime. He was a nut job. Well, do you, do you think do you, do you think going to the Tate do you think going to the Tate house was a random act? No way. They were planned going there. No. Yeah, they were sent there by by Charlie for a good reason. Okay. Because anyway. Charlie was a nut. Job. And it had nothing to do with Sharon Tate, by the way. Nothing. I think I always thought he was obsessed with. They were saying he was obsessed with the Beach Boy guy. Well, no, uh, it, no, the uh, the the music guy, the producer. What was uh, you're, you're, you're talking about you're talking about uh, well not Brian Wilson but you're talking no, about the, the brother guy. the brother. Uh, uh, who was the man? No, who was the studio guy who produced the Birds Ox? I forgot his oh, name. Oh well, that was Doris Day's son. Yes, Terry yes. Terry yeah. Melcher. Yeah, Melcher. Yeah, Melcher was supposed to produce an album with him. Uh, and he because, said he was no good. Because what's his name? Not Brian Wilson. But who who's who was the drumming? Dennis brother? Wilson. Dennis, Dennis Wilson. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm had thinking. had had Manson living at his home. I couldn't believe that when I read that. I was like, holy moly. And mold. in fact, it's at a certain point, moved out of his home so he could get a, a, not have to put up with Manson and then got somebody to go in there and get Manson the hell out of there. But in the meantime, Wilson had taken him over to Terry Melcher yes. uh, to try and uh, get him a contract. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you go to the Be which Beach Boys album was it? There was a Beach Boys album. And they I covered one of his tunes. Well, no, they not they covered it. They did his tune. The they credit is the credit is 
Charlie, Charles Manson. Um, it's called, uh, oh God, I can't even remember what the name was of the song. But it's on it's on one of the Beach Boys albums. Well, uh, you you have a secret. That's good. Can you tell us on the show where Jimmy Hoffa's buried? Um, <laughs> not really. Oh, you probably know that too. Though. I would say he's mulch. So Wherever he is, he's he's bed. now mulch. Okay. I think so he was in Giant Stadium. Foundation. Oh, that's uh, that's what's his name, the mobster. Yeah. yeah. So Jeff, do you have any secrets? Uh, no. No, okay. He tells him on the show, he says he was a car thief, but, you know. And by the way, nobody calls this show anymore. Remember when we used to get, like, 12 people? Yeah. The only time that happens now is on the uh, Monday afternoon show, you know. But, but uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, uh, I, I, what, do, what do I do for a podcast? That will be my big final podcast. That will be the one. You know, yeah. that's, I'm just thinking about what it could be. I mean, that's... Yeah, that would have me uh, thinking. Actually, I would. Th I'm agreeing with you. I'd be. I'd be scared to say anything. It's very. Uh, it's very. Uh, New Yorkers are afraid of everything. Oh, uh, I don't know why. I wouldn't say. It's. It's a. It's a very simple motive. That's. That's the reason well, I'm I amazed. You, Alex. Well, that's the it's reason I'm amazed insane. that it hasn't come out. You I'm know. Trying to think what it could be. Uh, so you uh, get back to Scott Peterson. You believe that. Uh, he didn't kill his wife, and her, her I, wife. I'm not saying I believe he did or he didn't. But according to this sister-in-law, he didn't. The time frame is all wrong. He couldn't have been there to kill her, and that she is going back to court. To uh, they're going back to court to ask for either a new trial or a new hearing on the the new yeah, evidence. It's been in the news on and off, back page news. Yeah, well, you know, he did get the death sentence after all. But. They haven't executed anybody in San Quentin in years. So I doubt if he's going to be executed anytime soon. And this well, your your buddy Phil was involved with that case. Was he? Yep. He had to go for the. They had. Uh, I think he went diving um, where the baby was found. He didn't find the baby, but where it was. So they had the GPS coordinates. Uh huh. Where it was at. So yeah. Okay. Well, here we'll he's do a, a whole forensic diver. I can't. I can't see Phil. It's like I saw that. I was watching the show with you the with him the other day with you. That picture of the boat. He's left. He's the only happy cop I would see. It's like I can't see him as a cop, Alex. Mm -hmm. I can't see him as a scuba diver. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't want to see him as a scuba diver. The good thing is he's watching the show right yeah, now. Yeah, but you know the one thing about him is he may be a good scuba scuba diver. Yeah, a lot of buoyancy there. Oh, a lot of buoyancy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Working up an appetite, Anthony. I'm gonna go. I just can't see him as a cop. I Why? Can't. Really? Why? I don't know. He just doesn't seem like a cop type. Phil. Well, Phil doesn't seem Phil like a cop a type. type. That is stupid. I just said that. Well, he he, he, guns, he just, wasn't really a cop. What a cop type is. Yeah, but he wasn't. He wasn't really a cop. He was a. He was kind of like a uh, uh, rent a cop. You know. I mean, he. No, he wasn't. Well, he He's, was. A, he was a, a volunteer, thing. right? Yeah, a volunteer, a reserve officer. Oh, okay. He was a real cop. He's a real cop? I mean, he could have put cuffs on me and he taken did, me to he jail? He did detective yeah. work. He did real police work every every time he was on so, so what happened? Why isn't he doing it anymore? Well, he's a little too old. He's oh, really? Is that it? I don't know. He's out of shape? He put in uh, over uh, Listen, when you're talking about out of shape and you're using the word cop, those are terms that are synonymous, you know. They really should be in better shape, I have to say that. Mm. I'm surprised each year, I don't mean it in a bad sense, I'm surprised each year they don't have to hit a certain requirement. You want to see cops that are that are in shape and stuff? Go to L.A. Well, close to being in, I mean, some of them well, are wait, just... Wait, 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 hold on a second. Go to L.A., I think it's say? dangerous for them to do the job. You say go to L.A.? Yeah, L.A. has high standards. Oh, they really? do? Yeah, when I, I mean, was that, in New York, you think, though, because it's physical. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. down there, at, to join the police department, you have to have an eight by ten glossy of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I look like now, and what happened here? <laughs> you know. So, uh, uh, anybody have any new feelings on uh, on uh, Liz Cheney and what's going on with her? He's going to lose her job. You know, the uh, you know, primary or two. You know, the, the, the lady that's going to replace her, what's her name? Elise Stefanik? Yeah. Whatever. 
All I got to say, Tracy Flick. Remember the movie? Yeah, yeah. That's election, her. election. She's just, she's like a, she's just a, um, she's not stupid. She's very smart. No, but she's but she, kissing Trump's ass. Yeah, yeah. Oh. She was totally, you know, she was totally against that she, Trump in the beginning when she got elected, and soon as soon as she got in and she saw who has the power. She just knows where the well, power the is. Only, the only thing that, that Liz Cheney is guilty of is calling out Trump for what he did. And this is yeah. all stuff we have proof of and so on and so forth. And she's simply saying, look, I'm a conservative. I'm as conservative as you can get. And that's one of the reasons I'm making a case out of this is because as a conservative, this is appalling to me that yeah. he should have done this. And uh, the Republicans, I don't know why the Republicans want to just, you know, excuse his behavior. So, I, I well, don't excuse his lying the whole four no, years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, forget they about like 30,000 lies during his administration. Okay, but forget all those lies for a second. We know the guy's a lying sack of shit. We know that. Okay. That he never, if he ever told the truth, he wouldn't know it. All right. Uh, and, and it's been the way he's done business all his life. I mean, you have to realize Roy Cohn, who was his mentor, taught him that you never admit you're wrong and right. you never admit you did anything. Right. Yeah. You know, you just stand your ground. If you stay on your ground long enough, you'll come out on top. Also, never pay your bills. That's another one that Roy yeah. Cohn told me. <laughs> never pay wrong. your people, bills. People line up to work for him. For I can't believe the bank is in their money. Huh? The banks just give him loans. Like I was talking well, to Shekin. Believe, like, <clears throat> believe me, there's no loan in the world he could get right now. That's right. I bet you his money, he's getting his money from overseas, Russia. Have you really got to see his taxes? I, I, I would say going. I would yeah. say you're probably right. Yeah, he probably hadn't gotten a loan. That's why nobody can see because all those years. loans are probably floating from overseas. Yeah. I mean, he perhaps is the most corrupt president we've ever had. Easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and you could say that some presidents approach, approach corruption, but they, you know, they had more respect for the job than that. You think he was corrupt. worse than Nixon then, Alec? Nixon then? Way worse. Yeah. Oh, definitely worse. Well, my old oh, joke yeah. has been Trump's horrible. So actually, you know, Bush doesn't look that bad. In fact, <laughs> Daddy Bush doesn't look that bad. In fact... <laughs> Ronald Reagan doesn't look that bad. Oh In fact, God. Nixon doesn't look that bad. Come to think of it, Hitler doesn't look that oh, bad. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, the truth comes out. Yeah, yeah. On the Alex Bennett show, I don't care how corrupt Nixon was. At least he wasn't trying to sell out to the Russians. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, they had something on him, and what, did somebody say last night they have the Steele dossier two is coming out? Yeah. Oh, really? really? And, and this one is the illustrated version? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rumor is that they have the PP tape in it. Well, really? it's got to have the PP tape. They tapes. have the what in it? The PP <laughs> the tape. The hookers peeing that. on it. Oh, okay. Now well, no, she, he supposedly had the hookers pee on the bed that yeah, Obama yeah. slept in. Yeah. And then he took a picture of it or something. Obama. Yeah. Yeah, he really hated Obama. Just hated Obama. And you know what he hated him for? Because Obama him. made fun of him at the correspondence dinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I could do a back to the future, I would go back to that day, whisper in Obama's ear, do not say anything bad about Donald Trump. Because it came back to haunt all of us. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Obama's fault. Blame the black guy. But they say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Couldn't be late. It's the, the Negro every time. <laughs> You know, I mean, but but uh, uh, o Obama, uh, a lot of people say that was the night that he decided he was going to run for president. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now he, he never smiled once during that correspondence. Yeah, he has no sense of humor, you can see. No. He just, I he like when young. he gets up to speak. Of any of the presidents, he is the most educated speaker in, in a long time. When Obama gets up to speak. Oh, I thought you meant yeah. Trump. No, no. Well, I, 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 I was gonna, I was gonna give a big Biden, Biden, uh, not Biden, Obama. I'm sorry, yeah. no, Obama. No, he can, yeah. yeah, Obama. Yeah, he can talk. He's got a good grip of the English language. Oh no, he's smart. You know, he's terrific. Yes, yes. And uh, one of my favorite presidents. Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, uh, f 
I have a favorite former president, which is Jimmy Carter. Yeah, I like Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Uh, yeah we should, I thought he was a weak president. president. Uh, what? I thought he was a weak president. He was a weak president, mm -hmm. but he was a great ex-president. He did good yeah. stuff after oh, he was no longer president. Absolutely. Afterwards. I agree with you. you know? He's a great humanitarian after the presidency. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of humanitarians, I wonder how, how effective the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is going to be now. I, I love rumors. They say that Melinda is going to go be Donald Trump's new wife. Oh, I say, okay. Oh. <laughs> it was in, in some stupid newscast, and I thought that's got to be the What? Somebody thing. actually said that? Yeah. She's living in front of Trump? Apparently, you know what it looks like? It looks as though Bill did something that pissed off everybody in the family. Really? Because they, about two months ago, they had a getaway to a private island. It's an island you can rent. Okay. But he owns it. No, he doesn't own it. He, he no. re they rented it. and Doesn't he own Hawaii or something like that? No. <laughs> what happened was the wife, Melinda Gates, took the kids and all their friends and all the family who wanted to have a little vacation out to this island, which is out in the middle of nowhere. And they stay there for about a week. It's about a, how much, how much is it? $250,000 a day to rent this oh. island, okay? She's we stayed at the red carpet in Florida for like 50 and, <laughs> and the only person not invited was Bill. <gasps> and the rumor is wow. the reason Bill wasn't invited is the kids don't want to even talk to him. I wonder what happened. There's something that went on that Bill did that has was was the nail in the coffin here. Um, I what it was. Huh? Oh. Who knows? Okay. Who knows? I mean, I'd like to say maybe he took a lover or something, but have you seen him? I mean... He well, gets more media time than Donald Trump when it comes to positive things about COVID. Well, I mean, he's been terrific in the aftermath. Absolutely. That's why I hate to see the two of them break up, because together they were very effective in, yeah, in, uh, in all these things that they, you know, that they paid attention to. Yep. Uh, and I, I just don't understand why the whole thing happened. But it happened. and uh, yeah, I don't think we'll ever know. Well, maybe we will. And maybe we won't, you know. Alex will find out and tell us right before he dies. Yeah. There we go. And he's got a lot to tell. Will. Well, she, Bill ran away with one of the Manson family. And uh, <laughs> Squeaky from. <laughs> yeah, squeaky. Come on, I'll let you get you. If squeaky like still a nut. Squeaky. You almost killed Ford. That's good enough for me. Squeaky. Uh, I, maybe, maybe Bill Gates is in love with the uh, tax. the streets. Uh, Squeaky's still in prison, isn't she? Is she? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I can't believe she almost killed the uh, Ford, didn't she? I mean, how do you get that close? Well, she was my favorite Manson family girl, because how can you hate a little girl named Squeaky? You would think, like, yeah. she can't hurt anybody yeah. if she pulls out a gun. <laughs> the 70s are crazy, I'm telling you. She fired a gun at Ford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, like, two weeks, two weeks later, somebody else fired a gun at him. It, yeah. It's too bad she missed. Well, no. If Ford, what was wrong with Ford? I mean, Ford was just a doofus, you know. I don't have to kill him though. <laughs> What's the trivia about Ford? What is it? The trivia about Ford. The great piece of trivia. What is it? The only president never to be elected to the yeah. position. Oh. Yeah. He was never elected vice oh, president. Wow. He was appointed vice president, yeah. and he was the only president ever to take the job. And never to have been elected to the position, so sort of like Donald Trump. So who who huh? was the only woman woman to win an Academy Award for playing a man? Was that uh, what's her name who did the? Oh, uh, Hillary Swank. Hillary, Hillary Swank. No, she didn't get the Academy Award. She didn't. Okay, did for she playing a for playing a man. What about what the, Julie Andrews? Was it? No. No. No, no. You're, you're, I know what you're thinking of. Huh? Uh, NPR. No, not NPR. Uh, yeah, NPR. It was, I'll tell you, it was Linda Hunt. No, Linda Hunt won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. I thought you meant Best Actress. Well, the Academy Award for playing a man, though. 
Oh, oh, okay. But, but, the, the year of living but wait, wait. Yeah, we're living dangerously, and I would have told you that if you said best supporting actors. Oh, but, sorry. But you said <laughs> one okay, in an Academy know. Award, and you generally think, you know. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily. Uh, but uh, um, let me see here. Is there any other Academy Award trivia? No, that's about it. Are, are people getting back on the street, John? Huh? Are people in San Francisco getting back out on the streets? Yeah, yeah, there's the thing. Well, that's good, because I think I'm going to visit San Francisco tomorrow for the first time in a year. They have a very low infection rate. In fact, they're almost at herd immunity. Yeah. That's correct. That's so correct. We, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff's, 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 shut up. Jeff's going to speak. <laughs> this is what you were asking me the other day, and now I have the answer. What? At Connecticut, currently, has got the best number of COVID people who've had the shots. Really? And we're actually at 50% of the people in Connecticut. Really? Have, have had at least their first shot, right? So you're not, San Francisco's at 72, so sorry. For the, for the first shot, not for, the, not for both shots. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah but San least. Francisco's a city, not a state. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but they're close to herd immunity. <clears throat> uh, well, but there's only what a million people in Connecticut. <laughs> what do you mean? Most of them are retired. Ah, <laughs> that's why. Uh, but uh, no. then Connecticut must be one of those uh, states where you know where the positivity rate's real low too, like California. Mm. I I think the reason why San Francisco, uh, you know, why the rate is so down is. There, everything closed up. There's nothing open in San Francisco. You know, it's just, you well, know. What we're, well, we're down to here in New York, we were down to 23 deaths yesterday. Wow. And wow. Uh, the the infection rate has gone down precipitously. Here in Manhattan, we have the lowest infection rate in the entire state. And it was something really? like 0.9 yesterday. I don't know what that's, it was. Or day before good. yesterday. Yeah. Probably the biggest city. In, in the state too, isn't it? Yeah, but the rest of the boroughs have are in the twos somewhere. So we were we're very well here. I mean, chances of me if I walk down the street with a mask on and tongue kiss everybody, chances of me getting COVID are very low. Remind me, me not getting to be on arrested that. is a little higher. However, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Remind me not to be on that street at that. Did time. you get your shot yet, Scott? Got both. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, it kind of pissing me off. You remember Charlie getting the shingles shot? I got, to, I got it about two months ago, and it does. It stings like a bitch. Yeah, and I got my next one coming up next Thursday for my my follow up. You know what? Oh, I, you know what? I, you you know what? I got on Monday. I've got arthritis here, hmm. so they're going to stick. Got, they're going to shoot yeah, me up with a steroid shot. in that joint, and that's painful. That's a really yeah. painful yeah. shot. Time for a cortisone shot. Well, Alex. that's it. Cortisone. That's what mm -hmm. he's doing. Yeah. yeah. And I had it done to me once before, around in there, and for years, it didn't bother me. I mean, it really works, you know, yeah. but it stings like a motherfucker. Yeah, it does. Uh, only for a minute or so. Yeah. Yeah. And the cortisone goes. What do you mean, no, day. Scott? Not, not the shingle oh, shot. Oh, not the shingle <laughs> shot. Oh, yeah. Did you have a single oh, shingle wow. shot? <laughs> By the way, while we're at it, do you know what kind of noise annoys an oyster? <laughs> a noisy noise annoys an oyster. Thank you. So I don't think they're doing that goes along with my single shingle shot. I don't think they're doing the single shingle shot anymore. No. I think they're using yeah. the name of the, the double shot. It's called Singrex. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so I, I had both. And I got my second one two months before the COVID shot came out. And I'll tell you, Charlie, everybody that I know that's got the second one, you want to take the next day off. Really? I got that's both. They told me about COVID. I got, bo I no. got both shingle I shots. No problem with I wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I had both shingle shots. I don't remember her having any problem with them. Well, you think you know who killed the LaBiancas? No, <laughs> no not the LaBiancas. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> You know. you know, you you complain a lot that you have lost your memory, and I think your memory is sharp. Oh, really? Maybe short term. I mean, as we all get into our sixties and yeah, stuff, right. my short term memory 
Well, Sounds I appreciate like you saying that, Bill. But your long-term memory, I think <laughs> you're like an encyclopedia. I mean, you know, you just have a tons of information in there. Yeah, it's selective information, though. Sometimes there's something so obvious I can't remember it, you know. That happens to all like of us. Tonight we were trying to come up with a name, and now I can't even remember what the name was we were trying to come up with. But I went, I had to look it up, and it was ridiculous because it was something I should have known. You know. So, John, do you live on your street, on Larkin Street? No. No, no he Lark's doesn't. Day, Somebody told me you live in the Tenderloin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Leavenworth. I do, on Leavenworth and uh, Turk. Yeah. It's, it's it's a pretty good neighborhood now, though, isn't it? It used to be oh, a horror. No, no? no oh, way. it's still a horrible neighborhood. Leavenworth okay. and Church. Oh, you got to buy a bulletproof vest at the 7-Eleven to go through there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. i got to get out of here. I'm so lazy. But I'm, I'm, only, paying, I'm only paying 1400 bucks a month. But, um, you know, and, and my apartment's clean, you know. It's it's not bad. It's just it's just when you go on the street, it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> is it high crime or is it just... Just I drug addicts everywhere shitting in the street and you know every every wow. time you walk somebody's hitting you up to sell you drugs oh yeah wow. um yeah. Yeah, but yeah human feces in yeah. the street is you have not a smartphone john you have a smartphone yeah good so download an app or one of the police scanner apps san francisco police turn it on when yeah. you and walk around with that thing in your pocket the broadcast, go the rebroadcast on the scanner app, and nobody will approach you in San Francisco. I'm really? sure it works in other cities too. Really, I, I got that Citizen app that it it tells me whenever there's like a. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I just just go on go on on your on whatever it is you use. I, I use Apple, and just for my, mine is called Police Scanner Boy, Pro. Boy, am I glad we're at the end of the show now? This is oh, information that. everybody that. out there wants. All, all that does is just let you listen in on the... Uh, yeah, but if you put that in your pocket where people can't see it, they'll oh. think you're a cop and they'll leave you alone. By oh, the yeah. way, <laughs> Scott, so nice having you here. You know, I, I really appreciate it. I enjoy you, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and Alan, nice having you here as well. And Charlie Thanks. Wallace, always nice having you here. And Tony, glad you called tonight. John Larkin, glad you called. If John hadn't called and Tony hadn't called... And, and Scott hadn't called, I'd be here with three people. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, have a good weekend, everybody. What do you mean? This isn't the last show of the week. Oh, it isn't? Oh, sorry. <laughs> don't tell him, Alec. Don't tell him. <laughs> you know what I mean about losing track of things? No, right. Yeah. Right. We have one more show this week, Bob. Anyway, oh, uh, uh, Alan, thank you, or Bob, as I like to call you. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Hey, uh, uh, good to talk to you, uh, Tony. Uh, Can you just yeah. go through this list? <laughs> I'm going through it again. Thank oh, you, okay, Jeff. Sorry. Thank you, Scott. Thank you to John Larkin. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye at you. Okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just uh, kind of do a little cleaning up here of them and get rid of them. There they go. Uh, J uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection, and uh, he'll be taking calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Yeah, I'll keep doing this till I drop. It'll be the last show of the week, in case Bob wants to know. Uh, and it's the last show of the week, and uh, uh, we should have some fun with it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll see you at 10.30 tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there, wear a mask, and get the vaccine more than anything else. Let's get herd immunity as fast as we possibly can. Bye.